Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. Now, HB sent me their Omen 27C curved gaming monitor to review. It costs $530 on the HP web store, and I have an affiliate link in the description below. Now, I have seen it as low as $440, and for that price, it is definitely a good buy. Now, for a while now, I have been using my 27-inch 144Hz QHD BenQ monitor. So I was excited to see what difference, you know, the 1000R would make for the curve. Now, R stands for radius, which is half of the diameter of the circle should, you know, multiple monitors be placed end to end. The human field of view equates to about 1000R, so the Omen 27C should be a good fit, as Harvard Medical School did actually do a study, and they revealed that the blurred vision was four times greater um, on a flat monitor and, uh, you know, it did lead to 60% uh, more eye strain. Now, I have a 34-inch ultra-wide that I use for work, and I find that perfectly fine. But for gaming where you don't necessarily want your, your visual focus, you know, to move much, I do see the benefit of a curved panel if it is large enough and you're sitting close to it, like on a desk. Now, the 1000 number is actually in millimetres, or one metre. So a 1000R monitor means you must sit no more than one meter away for it to have any benefit. Now, did I find it more immersive than my 27 inch flat screen panel? Well, perhaps a little bit, but I wouldn't say it was a deal breaker. So let's take a look at the monitor specs. The VA panel has a resolution of 2560 by 1440. Now it does have a fast refresh rate of 240 Hertz, one millisecond response time with overdrive, HDR 400, and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. Now, this is formerly known as FreeSync 2 HDR. Now, FreeSync has three tiers, and you get the best one for this monitor, and it's certified for HDR monitors. Now, everything is nice and accessible in the box. You get a display port cable, you get a USB-A to USB-C cable, and the power brick. Now, setup is very straightforward and they have instructions taped to the box lid. Now all you do is attach the square metal stand that is stable and solid. Now there is a hole in the stand to route your cables uh, through it to, to keep it nice and clean. Now I like that the stand also serves as a headphone holder which helps keep your desk tidy. There is a groove in the stand that allows you to adjust the height from the desk level all up to six and a half inches off the desk, which does allow you to put some small speakers underneath as the monitor doesn't actually have its own. Now, I was a little bit bummed that it didn't have any speakers since my BenQ is excellent in that department. But bear in mind, the 27C's focus is on gaming, so it is expected that you'll be using headphones. And the 27C has an audio jack um, on the left-hand side, along with a DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0. On the right, you have two USB 3.2 Type-A ports as well as a USB-C port and you use the included USB uh, cable to connect to your PC. Now, I liked how the ports were not around the back, but on the bottom edge, although they are still hard to see, even with the painted symbols on the back. Now, I do wish that these symbols did light up, because I mostly play my games in a dimly lit room. Now, the monitor doesn't have any rotation options, but you can tilt it back and forth to help avoid any glare. It is a matte display, so it does handle reflections pretty well, but you will notice it if you do have a bright light shining on directly onto it. Viewing angles were very good, and I must say playing Battlefield on it was very clear and lifelike. Many people like a glossy display as it makes images pop more and text clearer. Now, I do appreciate that viewpoint, and given my dim room, I probably would have preferred that as well, but on the whole, I thought the image was good. Perhaps not quite as good as my 144Hz QHD BenQ panel that is also HDR400 certified. Now, shadow areas showed less detail and blues were more of a, a cyan color. Now, you can control settings via the HP Omen Gaming Hub software. There is a shadow vision option that definitely does help improve the visibility of shadow areas in dark games, such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider and also for movies. But I found that it makes text on a white background very hard to see. I tried to capture it in this video the best I could, but using this mode isn't recommended for browsing the web or doing any office work. You can turn Adaptive Sync off and use their function called Motion Picture Response Time that reduces ghosting by inserting black lines between the frames, which some people might be sensitive to. Also, 
As you uh, increase the level of this, it makes the display darker. And for some reason, I was unable to alter the brightness, either via the software or using the monitor's inbuilt display. As for ghosting performance, I think this function did help a little bit, but you might be better off increasing the response time slightly, as I prefer a brighter panel. HP gives you seven picture modes to choose from. They all have a contrast of 100% and a response time of three, which is the midway setting. I show the effect of the different settings during a game of Project Cars. To me, game mode and native modes were the best. They are brighter and very similar, actually. Now, standard mode is a bit darker and may be suitable if you play in a dark room. Warm mode is pretty bright, but you lose lots of color. So it is more suited to watching black and white content. Cool mode just makes it look more blue, so I can't see the point of that. Night mode reduces the amount of blue light, so it's like a, a more redder version of warm mode. It will help reduce eye strain in the dark, but I think I would just use warm mode. You'll, you also have HP Enhance Plus mode, and this sharpens the image, and you have three settings. But I found at its highest setting, it did over, over sharpen the image, but the two lower settings were fine. Now, it, it does affect text seemingly, so if you're like me and want one setting to use for everything, I would leave this off and use either game or native mode. Here we have native, standard and gaming modes and its effect on the color gamut. Native and gaming modes are similar with about 95% of sRGB, while standard mode was considerably lower. So with that mode also having lower brightness, its use case may be suited more to playing in a dark room. You do have better colors compared to warm and night modes. At peak brightness, I measured 440 nits. So it is nice and bright. Now HP does say it has 92% uh, of DCI P3 color space, but I measured 82%. So it was quite far off of that. Again, comparing it to my BenQ monitor, it's more of a gaming panel, more, more so than what I would use for any serious photo editing. You also have overlay options, such as having a crosshair or an FPS counter, but it didn't work in every game. So I would be inclined to leave it off and use third party software. If you prefer not to download the Gaming Hub software, you can manually change uh, the options via the panel's inbuilt OSD. And changing the settings is pretty straightforward. Use a, a joystick at the back of the panel next to the power button. You also get input options, which include a picture in picture mode, which allows you to attach a second PC so you can do work on your main PC whilst watching TV on the second PC. Now this works well, but not everyone has a second PC, so I prefer using screen splitting software like LG offers. And I use that a lot on my 34 inch ultra wide LG monitor and I wish HP offered this. So what did I think of the Omen 27C monitor? Well, I do think it's a good gaming panel, especially if you want to play at 2560 by 1440 at 240 hertz. In this regard, I do prefer it over my QHD 27 inch BenQ panel. I do like that you can use the stand to hold your headset and you can use it to power your mouse or use the USB ports to access a portable hard drive or memory card hub that otherwise might be awkward if your PC is on the floor. Now, perhaps my brightness control was broken, but I am inclined to think that it was not. And one has to use the various picture modes to change the brightness. But these effects also affect the color too, so it's not an ideal situation. My BenQ monitor as a sensor that adjusts the brightness depending on the ambient light level. And I think, you know, that would have been a good option to add as well. Now I have also used an Aorus panel that had a good noise cancelling software, which helps with immersion. So that would also have been a nice feature for HP to add. But like I said, you do get a fast 240 Hertz refresh rate and up to one millisecond response time with decent colors. Now the curved panel makes it, you know, just make it, make it look nice. But I don't think it is needed on a 27 inch. So if you can live with a, a slow 165 hertz refresh rate and a flat panel, they also have the HP 27i. Otherwise, even at $530, it is still cheaper than the 240 hertz Omen X27. That is $780 over at Walmart. I find that 27 inch is an ideal size for a monitor. It doesn't take up too much space on your desk, yet still gives you great gaming immersion. And if you're in a market for a fast 27 inch monitor, you can't go wrong with a 27C, especially if you can find it on sale. Thank you for watching. Bye now.